In a small twist of fate, a destitute young orphan purchased a second-hand stroller for her daughter at a bustling flea market. Little did she know that this seemingly ordinary act would unravel a chain of events that would alter the course of her life, Carrie Donovan. An orphan who had crossed paths with her future husband Tyler in foster care. Had built their world around each other. The couple married straight out of high school. Promising a future brimming with happiness. Five years later. Tyler. Now a construction company supervisor with stable health insurance and a decent salary. Decided it was time to start a family, their joy multiplied as Carrie became pregnant. And the couple eagerly anticipated the arrival of their baby. However. Their perfect life took an unforeseen turn when Tyler suffered a debilitating accident at work. Plummeting from the third floor and severely injuring his back, Carrie. Who had left her job as a secretary during her seventh month of pregnancy. Received the distressing call about her husband's serious injury while she was at home. Rushing to the hospital. The stress of the situation triggered premature labor. The happiest moment of welcoming their daughter. Layla. Into the world coincided with the devastating news that Tyler would never walk again. Point six months later. Tyler left the hospital confined to a wheelchair. And although the insurance provided some benefits and a disability pension. Finances were strained. Especially with a newborn in the family. Determined to contribute. Carrie returned to work at a bustling diner. Often working night shifts to make ends meet did I end this challenging time. Carrie found solace in her colleague. Ms. Higgs. An amiable woman in her early 60s. Mrs. Higgs. Always cheerful. Often joined the Donovan family for Sunday lunch. During one of these gatherings. Carrie confided in Mrs. Higgs about her aspiration to save up for a stroller for Layla, expressing the financial constraints. Carrie mentioned the high cost of brand new strollers. Mrs. Higgs, with a warm smile, revealed a hidden opportunity. Strollers are indeed expensive. My dear. But a friend's daughter found a beautiful one at the flea market for just $50, she shared eagerly. Carrie inquired. Really? Mrs. Higgs affirmed. Explaining that many people sell gently used strollers at a fraction of the cost. Considering children use them for only a year or two. Recognizing the kindness in her colleague's suggestion. Mrs. Higgs offered to accompany Carrie to the flea market the following week, the following weekend. Carrie and Mrs. Higgs ventured to the flea market together. As anticipated. They stumbled upon a charming old stroller. Mrs. Higgs. Meticulous in her inspection. Carefully scrutinized every detail and proclaimed herself satisfied with its condition, after completing the transaction. Carrie happily wheeled the stroller home. Eager to prepare it for her daughter. She began cleaning it inside and out. It was during this process. As she removed the seat cushions for washing. That she discovered an envelope tucked underneath. Intent on readying the stroller. Carrie set the envelope aside. Temporarily forgetting about its existence for three days that I in the midst of tidying her desk. Carrie stumbled upon the envelope. Turning it over. She opened it to find a single sheet of paper. The message conveyed. If you're reading this. You're probably a young mother. Much like I was. I am no longer alive. But I hope this brings a positive change to your life. Go to House 8 on 3rd Avenue and look under the oak. Intrigued. Carrie decided to explore the address mentioned in the note the next day. To her surprise. She discovered an old. Abandoned house. And in the garden stood a massive. Ancient oak tree. Casting its shadow over a white stone that a sense of wonder filled Carrie. Could there be buried treasure waiting for her here? Although a bit hesitant to fully believe it. Her excitement mirrored that of a child on Christmas morning, undeterred. She returned the next day armed with a shovel and began digging beneath the oak tree. Days passed. 
and despite her persistent efforts, the yard yielded no hidden discoveries. Carrie was on the verge of giving up when she discovered a note in her locker. It sternly advised her against digging and suggested that what she sought was plainly visible under the oak tree. A gasp escaped Carrie as she recognized the handwriting, it was the same as the note found in the stroller. That afternoon, she hastened back to the oak tree, examining the supposed stone more closely. To her surprise, it appeared to be concrete rather than actual stone without hesitation. Carrie took up her shovel and delivered a forceful blow to the stone. It cracked but didn't yield. Undeterred, she persisted, striking it repeatedly until the stone finally shattered. Inside, she found a small metal strongbox with a key in the lock. To her delight, the box contained thick wads of cash and what seemed to be a fortune in jewels. Atop the treasure lay yet another note, the note shared a poignant story, of a life filled with love and contentment. But marked by the deepest desire for a child. The author, who had struggled for years to conceive, finally received the gift of a beautiful daughter. Tragically, their joy was short-lived. As the beloved child passed away at a young age, and the husband succumbed to the grief, the note expressed a wish for Carrie's happiness and bore a heartfelt message of hope, hastening home to Tyler. A suspicion lingered in Carrie's mind. There was only one person who could be their mysterious benefactor, someone with access to both the stroller and her locker. When she arrived at work the next day, eager to confront her friend and express gratitude, Carrie discovered that Mrs. Higgs had suddenly left. According to the diner's manager, Mrs. Higgs claimed she was relocating to a farm in Montana and left a forwarding address. The handwriting matched that of their benefactor, convinced that Mrs. Higgs had slipped the note into the stroller. Carrie's heart broke at the loss of her friend. Determined, Carrie and Tyler devised a plan. With the money and jewels, they purchased a lovely home with an extra room and a special car for Tyler. Setting out on a road trip to Montana, they surprised Mrs. Higgs at her new residence. Overwhelmed with emotion, Carrie embraced Mrs. Higgs, exclaiming, It was you all along, pleading not to lose her dear friend. Carrie and Tyler extended an invitation for Mrs. Higgs to return with them to the city, expressing their love and need for her. They proposed she take on the roles of a mother and grandmother for their family. With teary eyes, Mrs. Higgs accepted. And for the first time in years, life promised to be an adventure for her. In this unexpected twist, Mrs. Higgs found joy in sharing the happiness she had played a part in creating, then is today's second story. Let's expect what will happen, Dad discreetly embeds a recording device in his daughter's hair and what he uncovers is beyond belief. Thomas Valero, observing his young daughter's tears every day after school, senses that something is amiss. Determined to get to the root of the issue, he discovers a shocking truth, commencing school is always a challenging experience for a child. Demanding unwavering support from parents to navigate the significant adjustment. Regardless of a teacher's competence, the initial days can be daunting with new routines, unfamiliar faces, and a different environment. Some children grapple with this substantial change, especially when faced with a strict or unkind teacher, realizing that his daughter is struggling to adapt to school. Thomas recognizes the need to uncover the source of her distress. Every parent wishes only the best for their child. And it's natural to worry when children seem to be in pain. Thomas, sharing this concern, becomes increasingly alarmed as he witnesses his daughter's emotional struggles each day, observing a noticeable shift in his daughter's demeanor. Thomas becomes acutely aware of her heightened emotions since starting school. Initially, Thomas attributed his daughter's distress at her new school to typical nerves associated with meeting new people and striving to excel. However, as her condition worsened over time, 
He sensed an underlying issue that eluded his understanding. Thomas's daughter increasingly cried and pleaded to stay home from school. This distressing scenario became a daily occurrence in the Valero household. Each morning, his little girl would succumb to tears, leaving Thomas understandably anxious. The situation continued to deteriorate, reaching a point where Thomas found it unbearable. Days turned into weeks, and weeks transformed into months. With all the initial excitement and joy seemingly evaporating from his daughter, T.O. exacerbate matters. She developed a growing fear of going to school. Every morning became a tug of war, marked by her evident terror. The situation escalated to the point where she adamantly refused to attend school altogether. As a concerned parent, Thomas sought to identify the root cause of his daughter's distress. Despite attempting to engage her in conversation, she remained tight lipped and resistant to revealing the truth. Thomas recognized that he couldn't let the situation persist and was unwilling to witness his daughter's continued suffering. The turning point was when Thomas discovered that his daughter was attending Pine Grove Elementary School's kindergarten. Before this transition, he had never observed any issues with her. She had always been a cheerful, sociable, and healthy girl, fostering friendships effortlessly. Now, she appeared like an entirely different child, leaving Thomas to question what had happened. Thomas observed that the transformation in his daughter coincided with her enrollment in the new school. He could pinpoint the precise moment when she transitioned from a cheerful little girl to an emotional wreck. As Thomas pondered the potential causes, whether it was the school, the other children, or a specific teacher, he reflected on her previous academic success. Before this upheaval, his daughter had excelled in school, receiving commendable grades and positive feedback reports. However, a few months into her attendance at this new school, both her academic performance and demeanor started to decline. Adding to the complexity, she began experiencing emotional distress before and after school, overwhelmed by his daughter's anguish. Thomas, feeling powerless, recognized that it was time to delve into the situation. He had reached a breaking point, acknowledging that any parent would naturally worry about their child's well-being. Witnessing his daughter's daily unhappiness heightened his concern, prompting him to intensify his efforts to uncover the root cause despite his attempts to ascertain the problem. The more Thomas probed, the more his daughter withdrew. It was then that he had an epiphany about the potential source of her troubles. Reflecting deeply, he concluded that she might be a victim of bullying, either by a classmate or even a teacher. Despite the stability and happiness of their family life at home, he recognized that external factors were affecting her well-being determined to uncover the truth. Thomas grappled with the challenge of addressing the situation delicately. He understood the importance of patience, especially when dealing with young children, recognizing it as a valuable virtue, acknowledging the difficulty of practicing patience, particularly in the realm of educating small children. He also considered the additional concern that his daughter was still very young, entering her formative years. This crucial and pivotal period in her life would shape the adult she would become. Recognizing the significance of these formative years, Thomas understood that the experiences during this time would leave a lasting impact on his daughter's future. This realization fueled his determination to get to the bottom of the situation, Thomas and his wife had instilled a particular mindset in their two daughters and one son. They prioritized fostering positivity and encouraging their children to be their best selves. Understanding the importance of developing a strong sense of self to navigate the challenges that lay ahead, Thomas. Unwilling to let his hard work in raising his family go in vain recognized the potential harm a harsh and mean teacher could inflict on the children in her care. Aligning with their family values, he and his wife were adamant about preventing any negative impact on their little girl, suspecting that they were merely scratching the surface of a more significant and ongoing problem. Thomas, 
known for his resourcefulness, resolved to unearth the truth about his daughter's distress. However, communicating with his young and shy daughter proved challenging. Faced with this obstacle, the concerned father decided to take matters into his own hands. As a father who couldn't bear to see his daughter growing sadder each day, Thomas was determined to intervene. He resolved to be the one to address the situation and formulated a plan. The challenge lay in finding a way to hear what was happening at school without physically being there. Aware that sitting in on the class might alter the teacher's behavior. Thomas contemplated the best approach for a while before devising the perfect plan that I in search of a more creative solution to discreetly catch the teacher in the act. Thomas opted for a literal listening approach. He meticulously planned and constructed a tiny hearing device. The following morning, he strategically placed it in his daughter's hair, allowing him to eavesdrop on the happenings in her school. This innovative tactic aimed to provide insights into her experiences and, hopefully, unveil the root of her distress, recognizing the drastic nature of his approach. Thomas understood the importance of not only knowing but also having tangible proof at hand, deciding not to disclose the presence of the device to his daughter. Fearing it might distract her, he eagerly anticipated the unfolding events throughout the school day. As his daughter approached the door after school, Thomas awaited her with a smile, eager to witness the return of the familiar joy to her face. He couldn't wait to unravel the mystery that had been troubling her, upon listening to the recording later that day. Thomas was left shell-shocked by what he heard. The revelation left him absolutely livid. Unable to fathom that such mistreatment had persisted for so long. Despite his fury, he felt a sense of relief. Finally gaining clarity about the ongoing issue. The recording unveiled a teacher displaying unkind behavior towards the students in her class, continuing to listen to the recording. Thomas became convinced that the teacher's behavior was the root cause of his daughter's problems. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, he felt compelled to take swift action against the teacher, who seemed to be exploiting her position of power, the realization that the person they had entrusted to care for their daughter could behave so callously hurt and infuriated Thomas. Initially struggling to comprehend the motive behind the teacher's actions, he discovered from the recording that she not only uttered offensive remarks but also employed an unnecessarily mean and condescending tone. The recording exposed instances of the teacher screaming and yelling at the children in her care over trivial matters, dismayed by the teacher's behavior. Thomas resolved to address the issue with the public school district. When faced with challenges affecting one's children, seeking intervention from those with the authority to enact change is often the most viable course of action. Aware that confronting the teacher directly would likely yield no results. Thomas opted to approach the state school board instead, setting up an appointment to present his and his daughter's side of the story. Thomas, armed with valid complaints and supporting evidence, expected the school district to take decisive action. However, he was met with disappointment as the authorities did nothing substantial to address his concerns. Despite the claim that they had disciplined the teacher, Thomas found this response inadequate, frustrated and dissatisfied with the outcome. Thomas grappled with the unsettling realization that the teacher, who had been tearing down children on a daily basis, was not held accountable to his satisfaction. Concerned about his daughter's return to school, Thomas insisted on more substantial measures than mere disciplinary action. The authorities' response left him deeply unhappy. Considering the severity of the issue at hand despite the school's offer to move his daughter to another class, Thomas couldn't shake the feeling that it was time for retribution. Taking matters into his own hands, he decided to confront Mrs. Duncan, the mean kindergarten teacher. While the school's solution aimed to address his daughter's situation, Thomas now harbored concerns for the safety and well-being of the other children in her class, recognizing the need to stand up not only for his child but also for the other children affected. Thomas felt frustrated by the lack of support or change offered by the school. 
The problem at hand. Perpetuated by Mrs. Duncan's behavior. Had significant implications for the lives of all the children under her care despite joint protests by Thomas and other parents. The school remained obstinate. Undeterred. They refused to give up. And word spread about Mrs. Duncan's mistreatment of the children. Thomas initiated a petition on change.org. Igniting a groundswell of support. Parents nationwide rallied. And soon over 2.000 signatures called for Mrs. Duncan's dismissal. To Thomas's surprise. The situation gained media attention. Putting him in the spotlight. Local news channels admired his determination to seek justice. And the story quickly became a national talking point. While Thomas couldn't secure Mrs. Duncan's termination, the widespread coverage ensured that the nation learned about the teacher's misconduct although this didn't fully resolve the issue. It provided Thomas with a small sense of hope that change could still occur. The lasting effect of Mrs. Duncan's actions on Thomas's daughter and the other children in her class was deeply troubling. The impact of such mistreatment on children who absorb and internalize negative experiences weighed heavily on Thomas and fueled his determination to bring about change. The impact of such experiences on young minds can linger for a very long time, if not a lifetime. Thomas by recognizing his daughter's strange and uncharacteristic behavior, and diligently working to uncover the truth, potentially spared her from lasting trauma. He felt a sense of relief knowing that he had intervened to put a stop to it. Realizing the serious implications for the children involved, parenting, especially mentoring through example, is a challenging task that often requires self-reflection and scrutiny of one's actions and behaviors. Thomas learned that despite his best efforts, there would be times when circumstances were beyond his control. Yet, he remained committed to ensuring his daughter's safety. Even if it meant facing hardships, Thomas emphasized the crucial role teachers play in shaping the lives of their students. Teachers should inspire, nurture creativity, and contribute positively to a child's development. Abusive behaviors and attempts to assert dominance through fear only hinder a child's progress. Fostering anxiety and fear. As for the outcome of Thomas's efforts, the situation remained uncertain. Mrs. Duncan continued teaching at the school, and Thomas hoped she had realized the impact of her actions. He remained optimistic that necessary changes would eventually occur. Believing in the righteousness of his cause, through this challenging ordeal. Thomas acknowledged that it had strengthened his family. The experience made him a more attentive father, emphasizing the importance of paying attention to his daughter's well-being. The family stood united in their commitment to support their children, exemplifying what makes good parents, Thomas and his wife, Lacey, with their unwavering dedication to their children's well-being played a pivotal role in preventing further harm. Their commitment to their children's best interests from the day they left the hospital showcased what makes a good parent. The stable home life they provided ensured their children's preparation for future challenges. And Aaliyah was fortunate to have such a strong support system.